We're writing and ranking every ride at Universal Studios Florida. Hey there, man. You good? <laughs> so the Jaws music is playing, and Molly is just living her best life. She even got the Jaws shirt on, folks. Look at that. That's how I feel when the Jaws music's playing. And it's not like da 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 da. It's like the beautiful. Oh. It's called Out to Sea by John Williams, and it's when they're out on the boat before disaster. Anyway. What were you saying? Hey there, fam, fam. It's time to ride and rank again. We did this challenge at Walt Disney World where we rode and ranked every ride park by park, culminating in the ultimate challenge of trying to ride every ride at Walt Disney World in 24 hours. Spoiler alert, we did it. And now it's Universal's turn. We are starting here at the original park and there are 13 rides for us to ride and rank. So let's get to it. Come on. Now, just like at Disney, this is only rides, only what Universal classifies as a ride, so there aren't gonna be any theater shows like the horror makeup show. There will not be any streetmosphere like the Blues Brothers, no dining experiences, no meet and greets, just rides. And there are 13 to do. There would be 14. However, Fast and Furious Supercharged is currently closed for the Halloween Horror Night season as it is housing one of the houses. So that is not available to us. However, we'll still Still included in our ranking. All right, we are starting at the back of the park today because most people start at the front of the park, so we thought it would be a little bit less crowded. It is very, very busy today. We do have Express Pass, so hopefully that will help, but the wait times are quite long. We are gonna start with a banger, the ET Adventure, the last remaining opening day ride in the park. You're gonna board a bicycle and head off with ET as you go to his home planet, the Green Planet, which is well, it's, it's something. It does have a 34 inch height requirement, so keep that in mind. But really, it's a rite of passage and a classic attraction here in the park. Okay, that is a delightful fever dream. I'll be right here. Why is it only E.T. that can save the planet? I have so many questions. If I ever meet Steven Spielberg and I get through my Jaws questions, I will ask him why only E.T. has the healing touch and why none of his uh, compatriots could have saved the planet. Because plot. Understood. We are going to rank these rides, starting with E.T. of course, on two scales. One, an objective must-ride scale. So if you're coming to the park, do we think you objectively must ride this? And of course, our subjective scale, which is entirely up to us, our own opinions about what we think is our favorite or not. We're gonna save that ranking for the end. True. Right. For right now, what do we give ET one to 10 objective must ride scale? I think it's gotta be a nine. This is the only remaining opening day yeah. attraction in this park. Yeah. It feels like a rite of passage when you are coming to Universal Studios Florida. I don't know, you something about this it. hits different. You gotta ride it, it's a it's a nostalgic fever dream, but I agree, we gotta leave room to grow, Yeah. but it's it's high on the charts. Up next, we are making our way into DreamWorks land to ride the newest question mark attraction here. It is the Troller Coaster. Now this is your introductory kitty coaster, so if you wanna introduce a new child to a coaster, this is the one that I'd recommend you do it on. It has a 36 inch height requirement. And the reason I kind of had that question mark behind the newest, roller coaster or attraction in the park is because this used to be Woody Woodpecker's Nut House Coaster. Now this has been rethemed, of course, to DreamWorks Land, but it was once Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone. Now, if you're interested in all of the changes that have happened here in DreamWorks Land, we have a full video covering that. But long story short, I think there's been a definite glow up here. We definitely fit. Okay, well that was the Trolls Troller Coaster. I'd like to, if I could, please do an impression of Alan on the Troller Coaster. Okay. You can't film on these rides no. at Universal, but Alan just looks like this the whole time. But with a mustache. <laughs> like I'm like giggling and like we're slamming into each other because we barely fit in the car, but then Alan's just like gleefully <laughs> smiling the whole time on the Troller Coaster. It's really delightful. Yeah, it is. Okay, so what will we rank that on our Ten. objective scale? I'm just kidding. That's objective just my bias love of Trolls. Um, I think it's like a three. Yeah, I think a three is fair. I think unless you've got a little kid, it's not a must-do for most people. It actually tends to get a longer wait time yeah. because they only have one 
vehicle, so it takes a long time to load and unload. So I think this land's really cute, but unless you've got a little one, it's probably not a must. Yeah, you might you might be okay skipping it. Yeah, but we are headed to a ride I, I a land I wish we could skip. Springfield. We have arrived in Springfield, and our first stop is Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl. This is a Dumbo style attraction that has absolutely no high requirement, but what it does have are aliens hurling insults at you as you spin in the sky. Should be fun. Now I want to go on Kang T. Springfield. We've been recruited to help the evil aliens. And we're going to. We're gonna. Yep. You know. That's very Slytherin of you. Welcome. Ah, do it, human. Do it. I will. Ha ha ha. Congratulations. You have betrayed the human race. I've never been more proud of you. Now go live with your shame. You know, I don't think I've given that ride proper uh, credit for being funny. <laughs> Yeah, the dialogue is actually quite enjoyable. If you stop and listen, it's pretty funny. The aliens are like, this ride's definitely run by friendly ride operators, not evil aliens trying to trick you. And then as you spin, you're actually helping the aliens attack the characters in Springfield. And they're like, good job betraying the human race. I'm now go and live with your shame. Like, it's funny. Yeah, it's good. But it's dumb though. Yeah, it's a dumb ride. I think objectively, it's like a 2.5. Yeah, it's slightly lower than Troller Coaster, I think. If you've got little ones or you're a big Simpsons fan, maybe it's higher on your list. But for most people, I don't think it's a priority. But uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at what's next. I don't know if my stomach's ready, but we must. Yeah, we got to. Let's go. Next up, the reason I said I didn't want to go to Springfield, the Simpsons ride. This is an attraction that puts you inside of Krusty the Clown's mouth and takes you to Krusty Land, where you're going to join the Simpsons on a wacky simulator-style adventure through their theme park, or through Krusty Land's theme park. But there's a, someone named Bob trying to kill you. It has a 40-inch high requirement. It is incredibly nausea-inducing if you get motion sickness. It's not in 3D, but for me, this one gets my tummy a flipping. But we got to ride it, so let's go. A roller coaster. I'm scared, Dad. Sweetie, they won't kill you in an amusement park as long as you have a dime left in your pocket. <laughs> oh, that's a load of. Ah! <laughs> I always get sick flying backwards. Oh! <laughs> you don't want to hurt me, Bo. We're both big and round and never finished high school. Let me through my mouth. <laughs> You're all gonna die. <laughs> There's a heavy yell coming from five to twelve. Oh, oh, Alone at last. Bob's trying to kill the kids. It just gets better and better. Well, okay. That was Krusty Land. I have never seen an episode of The Simpsons. Same. That shocks people every time I say it. And they're like, how is this possible? Just that just happened. Um, and you know what? That ride doesn't make me want to watch one. But credit right where credit's due. I do laugh at some of it. I think some of the bits are pretty funny. Uh, specifically on the way in, I love the theme park map. That was very clearly a play on uh, the other theme park across the way. And that those jokes continue throughout the ride. There's clearly mimicking Pirates of the Caribbean. At one point, they're mimicking SeaWorld. Uh, there's a big giant panda plush. They make jokes about like how everything's expensive at theme parks. So it is funny, which I give it credit for. I think objectively, though, yeah, this sits at five. Yeah, I think five right in the middle is exactly where this needs to go for the average guest. If you're going to get motion sick or you get motion sick, it's going to be lower. If you're a big Simpsons fan, it's going to be higher. But I think it's nice to ride if you get to ride it um, for most people, and it's but it's not a must do. I, I would agree with that. But you know what I think is a must do? Oh, I see it. Oh yeah, it's right. It's within eye line. Oh, I see it. So let's let's go. Up next is Men in Black Alien Attack. This is a shooter style attraction with a 42 inch high requirement, and you are tasked with joining the Men in Black. I think. My memories are kind of hazy. I, am, I remember that it went pretty well. I also remember that you do have to put larger items in the lockers that are provided on the exterior here because you will be spinning. All right, I think we had a good time. I think I won. I don't 100% remember, but that feeling never leaves you. Um, I love that ride. 
I, I genuinely really like that ride, and I genuinely think that's one of the best shooter style attractions in any theme. I tend to agree. It's up there because it's all practical, and I think a lot of times the shooter style attractions, heck, the newest shooter style attraction that opened here in this park is virtual. I mean, it's, I think it's cool because of the way it's set up, but having everything be practical, your vehicle spin and move with you, be able to interact with the other guests in the other ride vehicle, it all makes it just a very fun and unique experience. I also think it's better than the practical version at Walt Disney World, which is Buzz like your Space Ranger spin, which I know is shocking because I love Buzz, because one, you can pick the gun up, which makes it way easier, and two, I think it's easier to tell what you're shooting at. I agree. Um, so I don't think you need to care about Men in Black to enjoy this ride. I think it's a crowd pleaser. I do too. Uh, what do you think we rate it? I think it's a nine. I think, yeah, objectively, I think that's a nice. I think it's a great ride. I think it's it's definitely a must do for me when I'm doing rides in this park. And I and I like I said, I think it's one that pretty much everybody enjoys. Yeah, good to agree more. All right, we are bypassing Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley for right now because we do have to ride the Hogwarts Express. That is considered a ride on Universal's app, which is how we decide what we're doing for these videos. And it's gonna dump us in the other park and be a huge time suck to get back in here. So we're gonna save that for last. So we'll be back to do that and uh, escape from Gringotts. Another kind of housekeeping note I need to make is my concern about Rip Ride Rocket. It has literally not opened at all today. And we are being told it's because of winds, which that attraction is very tall. If it's too windy, they can't operate it for safety reasons. And uh, a little behind the scenes, we're filming this shortly after Hurricane Milton where luckily in the parks, everything is fine and safe and there wasn't damage, but because of that, the weather it has a little bit more blusteriness to it. So time will tell what we do with Rip Ride Rocket. We may have to improvise a performance. Huh. Speaking of attractions that we know need a reenactment, here's Fast and the Furious Supercharged, everybody. Now currently, as Molly mentioned before, Fast and Furious Supercharged is currently closed because it is Halloween Horror Nights and that is being utilized as one of the houses, but I know of just the person to give us the full experience of Fast and Furious Supercharged in a thrilling reenactment. Welcome to the family room. My brother Dom says that if your picture's hanging on the wall, you're part of our family now. Where's my picture? Dom just won another race again. So now we're gonna go party at Sullivan's Garage. Yo, 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 it's ludicrous. I mean, Tej, we got a problem. Shaw is here. You mean those two garages that we beat down in Spain? Yeah. They're bad. We gotta go fix the problem. Jamie, call the other bald guy. Okay, now Vin Diesel's on the phone. They're talking to The Rock. Rock and Vin Diesel, definitely not talking to each other for real because... The cop breaks up the party. This is the race day after party. What are you doing right now? I am like, sure for this, man. What are you doing here? Party is shut down. We don't work for you. What do you mean? I'm the one holding a gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Let's go, cookie puss. Who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Ring, ring. Roman, you didn't shut off your phone? It's on vibrate. Now we're moving. Now we're moving. Ready, hook them up. And now it's time to roll out and roll out hard because I'm ludicrous and I only speak in my own song lyrics. You can ride with our crew anytime. Truly a thrilling reenactment. It's almost as if I was riding it. Some might say that's better than riding it. I might be one of them. I very ironically love this ride, but objectively, what are we giving it? Objectively? <clears throat> Would you rather ride this or the troller coaster? Three? The same as the troller coaster? Yeah. I would give it a four. How about we settle on a 3.5? Fine. I know most people love to dog this ride, but like, it's, first of all, it's in air conditioning. So yeah, big win. that's a win. Big win. Second of all, there are real props and cars from Fast and the Furious throughout the queue and the also ride. very cool. And that's cool. And third, it's just as ridiculous as the movies. Yeah, so it is. I, I don't understand why people get mad at this ride and I'm like, have you seen one of the movies? Like, they're insane. Like, if you've only watched Fast and Furious, the first, or F Too Fast, Too Furious, when they're still just seal stealing VCR DVD combos, or then drugs. I get, or, yeah, huh. Moving drugs. Yeah, then, then, like, I can understand why you might be like, well, I don't understand what's happening here. 
But if you've gone, you know, if you've taken the full journey with the family, if you've gone to space, they literally drive a car to space. Like it's it, this is it's, this is it's normal. It's a Fiero. They drive Marshall's Fiero to space. It, nothing makes sense. Just like this ride, it's ridiculous. So I love it, but I would never tell anyone to wait more than like twenty minutes. Agreed. Agreed. So I do think the three shows are funny. I think a three and a half is fine. Yeah. I think people hate it because it's cool to hate it, yeah. and they think it's not. They they miss what was here before, which I understand, but. I, it's not the worst ride here. <laughs> what a glowing review. Up next, we are headed to Transformers The Ride 3D. This attraction has a 40 inch high requirement and uses the same technology that you're gonna find over in Islands of Adventures on Spider-Man. This is when you're gonna join in Nest and assist Optimus Prime and Bumblebee to save mankind again. Golly, we do get in a lot of danger, but thankfully these big alien robots that transform into a variety of vehicles are here to save us. save the world. You're welcome. I feel like we won't get thanked enough for that. I think we're not qualified to do most of what we've been asked to do. No, I, I agree completely. The fact that we're helping out a secret covert military operation with a bunch of robots that can transform into vehicles who are from outer space feels like it's above my pay grade when I'm not being paid. If you could befriend a transformer. Bumblebee. That's a good choice. What about you? Is there a shark transformer? I know there's a dinosaur. They do have some Dinobots. There are some like beast versions of Transformers, I, but I don't remember if there was any aquatic I, I want a shark Transformer if that's a possibility. If not, I will settle for the dinosaur. That makes sense. Um, okay, I actually like that ride, despite clearly not having a ton of knowledge of the Transformers franchise. I've seen the first two movies, I think, and they're The Michael Bay films. Fine, <laughs> they're, they're, they're Michael Bay movies. Um, but I think that ride's a lot of fun, actually. I do too. I think, I think I've got to give it a, if I'm being objective, a seven? That feels good. I think it's a good priority ride. If you if you like the franchise, I think you're going to enjoy the attraction. I think if you enjoy the ride technology of Spider-Man, you're probably going to enjoy this attraction as well. It doesn't make me super sick um, for some reason, even though it is in 3D and there are screens. I think it's because you're moving through practical sets. Yeah. So it doesn't make me quite as nauseous. That helps. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's a fun ride. I agree.
All right, we took a lovely coffee and parade break, as one does in a theme park. Grabbed a, a coffee here at the Today Cafe, and that was just in time to watch the Universal Mega Movie Parade, which is their new parade that debuted a few months ago. It slaps, y'all. I know this video is all about rides, but that parade should be a priority on your day in this park, because it's awesome. And honestly, you know what that ride made me do? It made me get even more hype for the John Williams documentary. There's a John Williams documentary coming to Disney Plus, and that parade is just like a, an ode to John Williams. <laughs> Jurassic Park, E.T., Jaws, like what an awesome parade, definitely see it. But now we are headed to Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. This is another simulator style attraction, but it is not in 3D. It was when it first debuted, but too many people were getting sick. So now it's more like a big movie theater in a moving seat, but Universal still qualifies it as a ride, so we're gonna do it. It does not have a height requirement uh, to sit in the stationary seats. There are a few seats up at the front that don't move. However, to ride in the moving seats, you must be at least 40 inches tall. Now in this ride, you are gonna be shrunk down to the size of a minion as you audition to see if you have what it takes to be one. Pro tip, make sure you love the color yellow and bananas. Also, general villainy is helpful as well. Hey, Alan. Hey Molly. What do you think that rocket's going to be used for? I think we're going to steal the moon. Mom, you're going to be very proud. <laughs> I'm going to be something very big. You want to be a man. Your training will begin soon. But be warned, the angel works at every time. <laughs> hey, Alan. What's up? Cruise butt. <laughs> Feels inappropriate. No, no! Oh, ew, 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 ew. Don't be scared, girl. He's just a big, bald teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, and no way will he shoot you with a fart gun. Oh, no? Come on, we have a job to do. Let's do this! Okay, everybody, see you in the lab. <laughs> minions the best part of that ride is the end when you get to dance with a minion that is fun yeah um i think that ride's cute it makes me cute. like it tugs on my heartstrings yeah it's nice that they remember the anniversary day and they don't think we remembered and then he has a huge party for them with the iconic unicorn as fireworks and balloons like the ghost. Doesn't, doesn't get more iconic than this guy right here so cool. and he has a party and the girls are all excited yeah but i do I think there's one thing that needs to be discussed that I don't think it is talked about. Okay. Is Gru a super soldier? Potentially. He does have a super strength at least. At one point, Agnes is about to be squished by a big metal like thing and he like stops it with his body. Like he puts a pipe in it first and then when it starts to break the mm. big metal pipe, he is strong enough to stop it. Is super this strength. Like, is this like a mom can lift a bus off the baby thing? Probably. Or, or, he's a super villain super soldier. He's a super soldier. All that to say, what do we rate it? I think it's a six. It often has a long line. It has a very slow load and unload, so it can have one of the longer lines in the park. And I don't think it's worth waiting in a long queue unless you have a diehard Minions fan amongst you. I was about to say, if you have a diehard Minions fan in your party or you've got young ones who are in love with the Despicable Me franchise, this is obviously going to move up on the priority list. It's cute. It's cute. cute. I do like the other minion ride more, though. I agree. We're headed to next. Yeah. And this next minions themed attraction is Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast TM. This is a shooter style attraction that puts you on an airport moving walkway as you carry a fun and customizable gun where you can blast a variety of targets in an attempt to achieve a high score. I know it might be a controversial take, but I personally love this attraction because of its rewrite ability. Now, there are no height requirements for this attraction, but you cannot be carrying anything, and that means large items. It's obviously going to impede you holding your blaster. Uh, that also includes infants. It's pretty darn tough to be carrying an infant in your arms while also attempting to simultaneously blast. So just something to be aware of. Another very unique thing about this attraction is, as I mentioned before, its rewrite ability. Within the Universal Orlando app, you can customize your blaster. The more you write it, you will actually unlock different features for your blaster itself, different way elements to shoot from the bullets, different ultimate abilities for the weapon, and 
prizes. You also have the ability to accept different missions from a variety of the Vicious Six. So if you really want to accept a mission from, you know, Balthazar Brat, if you want to accept any of their specific missions, you can do so. That will also get you certain rewards. Thank you. I won that one. That's true. I did successfully create uh, complete my mission. No, I couldn't complete mine. My phone wouldn't sync. Yeah, that is a bummer. But that's your phone's fault. For sure. It is my phone's fault. Uh, not the blaster. But the team members are very nice. If you want to sync your phone up once you've figured out all of your things, it connects with like... Or if I do. Or airdrop to the <laughs> I'm not going to speak to tech. Nope, the phone syncs with the blaster. If it doesn't, they'll, they'll try to help you out. Regardless, it's a blast. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Pro tip, a lot of people complain about this ride and I don't think it's justified for the most part, but one thing I do hear a lot that is justified is like people don't know what to, they're looking at and they have no idea where to aim. Um, but as a pro tip, when you sync your blaster or when your blaster kicks on because it's gonna automatically do that um, once you get to a certain point before loading, if you look at the little screen, it's gonna say your name, either an assigned villain name or the villain name you picked in the app, and it's gonna have a symbol with colors on it. Yes. That is your symbol to look for while you're shooting. So mine was like an orange fire blast. In fact, if you're colorblind like yours truly, that symbol is incredibly helpful in identifying your mark because as you've heard me say in other shooter style attractions, that can be a bit of a difficulty for me in terms of identifying where and what I'm shooting at. And so once you get on, the first thing I always do the first room I'm in, I take my blaster and I start making a weird pattern so that I can lock in with what symbol on the board, what shooter on the board is doing the same thing as me. And then that way I can know what I'm shooting at and aiming at. But besides that, I think this ride's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I think, it, like Alan said, it's got a ton of rewritability. I think it's silly and minion-tastic. And at the end of the day, you're just trying to destroy as much as you possibly can. That's the purpose of this attraction. Do you want to shoot at coins? Yeah. Do you want to find cool power-ups? Yeah. But ultimately, I just like breaking stuff. And you can shoot the minions if you want. Oh, yeah. So what do we rank this? I think this is a seven for me. This is maybe not the most number one thing I'm going to do in the park, but if I'm looking for a fun attraction that I know is going to be fun consistently, I think this is a great ride. I agree. Seven's right on the nose. I think if you are a annual pass holder or a return visitor, this is probably going to rank higher just because it does give you the benefit of that rewrite ability. But seven seems like a good for me. It also usually doesn't have too long of a line. Like it's very busy today. It's only 20 minutes. So yeah. it's really easy to ride because it's got that quick load situation. And I think just think the theming is fun. Villain yeah. con, it's funny. At this point, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket has still not opened. It doesn't look good. So we're going to go ahead and give our rating for Rip Ride Rocket now. But, but first, Alan, could you please demonstrate what it's like to ride for Pride Rocket? Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions and only illusions. Rainbows have nothing to hide. Some want to say and they choose to believe it. I know they're wrong, wait and see. But someday they'll find it. The rainbow connection. The song's lasting longer than the ride. It is. <laughs> <laughs> this attraction has a 51 inch height requirement. As Molly demonstrated, it's because it's quite intense. It is an attraction much like Rock and Roller Coaster at Hollywood Studios where you're going to be listening to music as you go on this coaster. However, you get to choose the song and there are secret menu songs including Rainbow Connection by Kermit which is my recommendation because it's a very uh, a very odd paradox. The juxtaposition is really quite interesting. Yeah, you're like on this terrifying straight up lift and then hearing Kermit sing yeah. wistfully in your ears. Personally, I think the best thing about this ride is the fact that it was used as a set piece in Sharknado 3 Oh Hell No. Um, but what would we rate this? I think objectively this is better than Transformers or Villain Con, so I'm going to say a 7.5. If you're a coaster enthusiast, that number is probably going to be higher and you're going to want to ride this. Uh, as somebody in their 30s, it gives me a headache it, every single time. As a cautionary tale, I love coasters. I think Universal does coasters very well, but this one does a little of this, and I also get a headache, so I don't ride it a ton for that reason. But I think it's fun, and I think it's more unique than just a regular coaster, mm. because I think the uh, song selection, I think the straight-up lift, I think the secret menu songs do give it a little bit of a twist on just like a regular coaster. So I'm good with that. Yeah. And now it is my... Well, I don't want to say pleasure, but it is my job to introduce our next attraction, Race Through New York, starring Jimmy Fallon. 
for some reason, this is a ride. You are going to enter the uh, Rockefeller Center here, and you're going to go to The Tonight Show, where Jimmy Fallon is filming. And all this part I like. For the record, I like the lobby. I like the queue. I like that they sometimes have the ragtime gals there singing. I like that hashtag the panda comes out. I think Jimmy Fallon's funny. What I don't think Jimmy Fallon needed was a ride, but he got one. Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon is a screen-based attraction in which you are going to race through New York with Jimmy Fallon. But along the way, you are going to see a bunch of bits from the Jimmy Fallon show, like the Ew Girl and The Roots and Hashtag and Thank You Notes. Now I'm dogging this ride pretty hard right now, and I do want to give credit where credit's due. I think this part is awesome. It is basically a museum about The Tonight Show with props and suits and information about all of the different hosts, and you never actually wait in a regular queue here, which is also great. You can enjoy this area as well as the upstairs area where there are interactive activities, and then you're going to be called in groups. So it's actually a much better waiting experience than most attractions. But this one tends to make me incredibly motion sick. However, I'm, I'm going to do my best to be objective in our ratings. Oh, look, the Backstreet Boys sing with Jimmy Fallon. See, it's it's hard not to like it. Buckle in your seatbelts from right to left and right to left only. You know, I had forgotten most of that attraction, and uh, I don't feel better for having now remember it. I, the problem is, I really like everything about that ride, yeah. except the ride. That, yep, that, that's the math of maths. I previously didn't have anything against Jimmy Fallon. In fact, I tended to lean positive towards him. Enjoy the show. I think he's funny. I think wrapping the uh, safety instructions I think the very fun like the lack of cue the stuff in the in the pre-show area like I think it's that is all cool then you get to the right you know it was successful it did make me a little queasy it, it delivered on that promise um uh, I'm trying to be objective I think objectively it's better than twirl and hurl objectively it's gonna Barely. be I mean I think it's worse than Simpsons yeah. Three point one. Slightly above Troller Coaster and Twirl and Hurl because it's unique. Yeah. And it's more involved. And I think there are some people who are really going to like that style of attraction. The kids next to us loved it. Yeah. So, and I bet they don't watch Jimmy Fallon. So, there you go. Up next, we're headed to Revenge of the Mummy. This attraction has a 48 inch height requirement and is park dark ride, part coaster. And it takes you through the story of Emotep as he is definitely not a fake mummy, but a real mummy, much to Brendan Fraser's chagrin, that and his lack of coffee. But we are here to try to escape the mummy's curse, and well, I just hope we're able to make it out okay. Same thing for Brendan, I hope Brendan makes it out okay too. Brendan Fraser's more upset about the mummy being real or no coffee? Coffee. Understand. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we're aligned. Hard 10. That not, adds up. Not even a question. No. It's such a banger. Great attraction. I love the blending of a dark ride with a coaster. They've also added some updated technological touches. I mean, it's got fire. True. It's got blood being spewed on you. You do. People are like, that's glass. My like, glass is hard. Glass wouldn't be wet. That's defo that poor team member's blood. I, I stand by it. It's got curses. 
It's got Brendan Mummies. Fraser. What else do you want? That's coffee, Molly. It has coffee. It's everything you could ever want. It's a banger. It's an absolute must do. 110. Uh, when you're in this park. Absolutely. Agreed. As promised, we have apparated back to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, standing outside in London and about to head into Diagon Alley to ride the one attraction inside this part of the park. And I say inside because I mean the one attraction in Diagon Alley. We still got the train out here. I've been distracted. Harry Potter Christmas stuff. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's also October. It is. I'm a Halloween girly through and through, but look at this little stationary set. Oh man. Okay, I, I gotta go. I have said it before. I will say it a million times again. This is my favorite theme park land on planet Earth. Welcome into Diagon Alley. It just feels like you have stepped right inside the story when you come in here. Oh, I think the Death Eaters are... Oh! oh they are, not... Hey, girl! Yeah, oh, hello! Trying not to get caught in a duel at the moment as we make our way to Gringotts Bank to ride Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. This is a part dark ride, part coaster, part simulator attraction that puts you right into the middle of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows when Harry, Ron disguised as a Death Eater, Hermione disguised as Bellatrix, break into Bellatrix Lestrange's vault to find the Helga Hufflepuff cup, aka a piece of Voldemort's soul. It has a 42 inch height requirement and probably the greatest attraction queue that's ever been built, but we do have to put our camera away to go enjoy this one, so we'll see you inside the bank. What was that? The Weasley's Wildfire whiz bangs. Firework from my brother's friend, George. Two in a row. No two notes. Row. No notes. Well, I do have that one weird nitpicky note about canon on Harry the whole Potter cars. He, he wouldn't say that. Also, they get through. Does time not matter in Gringotts? Is time not. different in different parts of the vault? Because Harry and Ron and Hermione go off to Bellatrix's vault and then very soon after meet up with us again. And I know it took longer than that to deal with that duplicating charm in the vault. But that's not important. Neither here nor there. The attraction itself. It's a 10 out of 10 must ride while you are here. Awesome technology, awesome combination of ride tech, the scale, chef's kiss. And that means our final attraction for the day is the Hogwarts Express out of King's Cross Station. Now this is considered a ride, even though it is also a means of transportation between here and Islands of Adventure. This attraction goes both ways. Not only can you go from King's Cross into Hogsmeade, you can also come from Hogsmeade back into King's Cross Station, and it's considered well, two separate attractions. So when we do this over at Islands of Adventure, we're gonna have to do this all again. And when we do the big challenge with both parks in one day, we're gonna have to ride it twice. I mean, I don't hate it. This is a very fun and quaint attraction that takes you with a unique video. It is gonna have a different view from here to Hogsmeade than it has from Hogsmeade back here to King's Cross Station. The only real knock that I have against this attraction is that it does require you to have a park-to-park -park ticket to be able to access it. If I was gonna give it a knock, it would be that it has a very slow load and unload process. That's true. And it's often much faster to just walk between the two parks because of how small the train actually is. But as a Harry Potter fan, it's lovely. It is. Oh, I forget, if we could both give it a knock, it's Hermione. Well, she's a little better now. She's a little better it's now. It's a taft now, not yeah, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, do you know how to get to platform nine and three quarters? Nine, nine and three quarters? Yeah. Mm, I'm not too sure. We have a platform nine and a ten, but I'm not sure about nine and three quarters. I could be confused. Uh, yeah, Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Muggle. Where's the food truck?
know. If you're confused about our locations, because the train spit us out in Hogsmeade. And now we're outside Islands of Adventure to give our final thoughts. But first, we must rate the train. All right, so what would we rate it on the scale? I'm trying to be an average Harry Potter fan. Not an avid? Yeah, I'm trying to just be like, oh fan. yeah, I like it, I've seen it. Um, 6.8. Yeah, I, I'll accept that. I don't think it's a must-do for a lot of people because of how long it takes to ride because you can walk across much faster, and because if you're not at least somewhat of a Harry Potter fan, I don't think you'll appreciate it as much. So I can I can agree with the 6.8. But if you are a Harry Potter fan or doesn't have a long line, it really is. It really is delightful. It is. And that completes our Ride and Rank Challenge at Universal Studios Florida, and we have tallied up the objective must-ride rankings from worst to best. Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl. The Troller Coaster, Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York, Fast and Furious Supercharged, The Simpsons Ride, Minion Mayhem, Hogwarts Express, Tied for the next spot, Transformers The Ride 3D, next, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, and Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast TM, Tied for the Silver, E.T. Adventure, and Men in Black Alien Attack, and Tied for the Gold, with a perfect 10, Revenge of the Mummy, and Harry Potter and the Escape from Great Gods. And now from my favorites list. Now, as a reminder, this is my personal subjective feeling, okay? So don't come for me. Top to bottom, The Mummy, followed by Escape from Gringotts, E.T., The Hogwarts Express, Men in Black Alien Attack, Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast TM, Fast and Furious Supercharged, Rip Ride Rocket, Transformers the Ride 3D, Minion Mayhem, the Troller Coaster, Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl, The Simpsons Ride, and Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York. And for my subjective ranking, I'm going bottom to top here, ending on a high note. We have, on the lowest peg, by a landslide, Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York, then The Simpsons Ride, Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl, Minion Mayhem, Rip Ride Rocket, The Troller Coaster, Transformers The Ride 3D, Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast TM, Fast and Furious Supercharged, Men in Black Alien Attack, Hogwarts Express, E.T. Adventure, Revenge of the Mummy, and on top for me, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Pretty close lists. Pretty close lists. Yeah, pretty close lists. Let us know your top attractions in the comments down below, and I'm looking forward to this in IOA. I am too, except for there's water rides in IOA, so yeah. that is something we get to do. But until next time, friends, please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're new, follow us on all of our socials, and come join with the Man Fam in the conversation on Discord. We'd love to have you. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. It has been. Bye. Bye.